Hello, this is Irv Shapiro with the Make With Tech channel, where we learn how to create, innovate, design, and make things using desktop technology. 3D printers, a little bit of woodworking, some software engineering, a little bit of electronics. Now, some of the most interesting videos that I've produced were created because I had to solve a particular problem that I was facing. Today's video was the result of my need to learn how to take STL files, the files you use with 3D printers, and turn them into beautiful images, artistic renderings, so I could post them online. Specifically, as many of you may know, I've created a software application, a website, called models.makewithtech.com. And at modelswithmakewithtech.com, we do something very unique. You go there and you select a template. And the template is for some 3D object. Then by filling in parameters on the screen, you make it your own. You create the actual model. So one template might be able to create hundreds of variations of models. You generate the model in just moments, and you download it as an STL file, you slice it and you print it. Now, when you post a template, which is an open SCAD application, a script, a program, as a creator for other people to share, when you post these templates, you also want to post a picture with it. Now, sometimes I just take pictures of things I actually 3D printed. Other times, it's nice to have an artistic rendering that really is attractive. And to do that, the premier program in the open source world is a program called Blender. Now, when you first open Blender, it's scary. I'm going to show you in a minute. So I've never really learned it. But over the last week or so, I took the time to really learn Blender. And one of the ways I learned it was with some videos from the Born CG video channel, YouTube channel, where there are outstanding videos that will teach you a lot of details about Blender. Today though, I'm gonna simplify everything down. And in under a half hour, I'm gonna teach you how to take an STL file, load it into Blender, and create a beautiful image from it that you can use on a website, a blog post, a forum, or just for the fun of it. So stay tuned and let's learn a little bit about Blender for 3D printing together. Now, as the Make With Tech community expands a bit, it now has a user community it formed at makewithtech.com where thousands of people get together and talk about things they're making, 3D objects they're printing, even a little bit of electronics. It has this YouTube channel. It has models.makewithtech.com. It's getting a bit more expensive to run. And your views of these videos is a big help. So please, if you enjoy these videos and you want to see more of them, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, and share these videos with everyone you know. Now, let me first define the actual problem. So we're going to take a look at models that make with tech.com together, and, and I'll show you the problem I'm trying to solve. If we look here on the screen, if I go ahead and click on search make with tech templates, these are templates for things that you can manipulate, things you can change. And I'm gonna show you one of the templates I've actually worked on, and that's for a bracket for shelves. You know those L-shaped brackets are actually shaped like this, not like this, that you put shelves on? Well, if you wanna create one, just the exact shape and size you need, for a particular project, I created a model to do that, a template. Now, if you look at some of the other templates here, they're much more beautiful, these images, than mine, which is just a screen capture of a slicer screen. So I'm gonna take and I'm going to create a more beautiful image for this particular model template. To do that, I first need 
an STL file, the actual output you would use with a 3D printer. So I'm going to click on the customizer icon, this little 3D box here, and you'll see the picture here. And then down here, you'll see that I can actually take and alter how this template is converted into a 3D printable model. I can change the size and the width and the thickness and the screw holes. So let's say I want to make this um, a bit uh, narrower. So I'll make it 20 millimeters wide. And I can click on preview here. And in just a few seconds, you'll see on the screen, I have a narrower variation of what's shown there. Okay, so now I'm going to take and generate a real model, not just a picture, a model that I can 3D print from it. I'm going to click on Q, and some models take minutes to generate depending on, on the complexity of the template. This one will actually complete um, relatively quickly. And we can go over here to the results tab and we can see our custom shelf bracket. So now I can look at that in 3D and we'll see it right over here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And now I'm gonna download that STL file. So you start with the template, you put in your parameters, you generate your model, you download your STL file. And if the designer of the template and anybody can design templates in the open SCAD language and upload them to models that make with tech.com. If as a designer, you have a buy me a coffee tipping account, those that's a tipping account for your patrons to sort of say thank you. That will show up here. Um, I'm not gonna tip myself. So I'm all done here. Now, let's verify that this model is ready for 3D printing. What's the best way to do that? Well, let's see if we can open it in a slicer. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Cura, and then I'm going to load this model over here, and we can see it's ready to be sliced. Now, you can see here exactly how I got that picture. I just took a picture of this. Let's make something more beautiful. So let me open up Blender here. And as soon as this comes up on the screen, you'll see why I was intimidated by this program. I've been in the computer industry for 35 years. I was still intimidated by this program. Look at all this stuff. And even worse, if I click on the background here, and then I see there's a cube here. So there's a camera, there's a light, and there's a cube. And the way Blender works, is it's as if you're looking through a viewfinder of a camera and you're looking at an object and you're lighting it with different lights to create a beautiful photograph, a simulated photograph. So I click on this cube and I try to drag it around on the screen, nothing happens. As, as soon as you do that, you get frustrated with Blender, you give it up. So I'm gonna show you how to use it basically. The first thing you need to know is click on an item and then hit the G key, the letter G for grab, and then do not press any mouse buttons. Just take and move your mouse, and the item will move. Hit the left mouse button when you're all done. So I clicked on the item, I hit G for grab, and I just moved it around on the screen. Now, if you're going to use this program, you really need to have a three button mouse. So this is a simple three button mouse. I don't know, probably 30, 40 bucks uh, online. This is a little more complicated three button mouse. Doesn't matter which kind, but you need to have a three button mouse. If you take the middle mouse button and you take and you move your mouse while holding it down, you can rotate your scene. If you take the middle mouse button and you hold shift, then you can actually pan your scene. Now you have to hold shift down before you press the mouse button. Now, when you select an object like this cube here, you can go over here to the scale button. And then you can take the circle and scale it uniformly. Or you can take these little handles and scale it in different directions. Now, another way you can move an item 
besides grab is you can click on the move icon over here, and then you can use the arrows to move it on a particular axis. Now you also can use grab the same way. So hit G, and then if I hit X, it will only move it on the X axis. And you can see where X, Y, and Z are over here. Now if I want to look at it from the front view from X, I click on X. I want to look at it from the side view, I click on Y. I want to look at it from the top, I click on Z. So this will let me look at it from any of those particular views. If I want to see what my camera sees, I click on the little camera over here, or if I have a numeric keypad, I press the zero key on that keypad. And you'll see here, the camera is, the object's not really centered in my camera. Well, there's an easy way to fix that. I click on my object, then I press F3, I type in a line, and I say align active camera to selected. And it will move my object so the view frame of the camera matches it completely. Now, if I want to see what this looks like in high resolution, the highest resolution, ready to be exported, I click on Render. And I can see what it will look like in a higher resolution. But I also can get close to that if I have a fast enough computer in real time. So see these buttons over here? This first one just basically does generic shading. It doesn't take into account the fact that this scene has a light in it. So let me rotate this back around. And you can see here the camera is looking from here, and there's a light over here. Now I could click on the light and grab it like any other object and move it closer here. But when I move the light around, grab it and move it, it's not changing how the cube looks because it's just sort of simulated. It's designed to be very fast for slow computers. If you have a fast enough computer, you can click on the globe on the far right here. And that will actually show you what your lighting looks like, including the environment, the world around your object. So now, if I move this light, I can see how it affects the lighting of the object. That's going to make it very, very easy for me to fine tune how my object looks. Okay, so now we're ready to bring in our STL file. Now, there's a problem here. And the problem is that see these grid marks? They're a full meter because this is like the world. So, as an example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This camera is seven meters away from the center of my scene. And this light over here is way far away. So I'm going to hit G and move this light a little closer. I'm going to hit G and move this camera a little closer. And now I'm going to import my STL file. But a unit in Blender is a meter. A unit in a slicer is a millimeter. So if I have something 140 millimeters in Blender, it's going to come in as 140 meters. That's too big to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to import it. And let's find our file here. Downloads, here we go. And now immediately, see how big it is? Immediately, I'm going to take and scale it. So I'm going to click on Scale. Now I want to do this numerically. So I can press the N key to get this sidebar. I also could go over here to View, Sidebar, and turn that on or off. And then I'm going to take the scale and I'm make it much smaller, 100 times smaller. So 0 0.01, and I'm going to fill that in for each of these. And then I'm going to zoom out. And now we can see our camera, our light, and our object. But if I hit the zero key, or I hit the camera over here, we'll see the object's really small from where the camera is. So if I do a F3 and type in a line 
and select active camera to selective, it's going to move the camera in close enough so that when I look at the viewport, like looking through the camera, it fills up the scene. Okay, so that's sort of nice. Now, I'm going to go up to the top here, and instead of looking at my shading once again in just basic shading, I'm going to turn on full shading to see how this is going to look. And we can see here that it's not exactly what I'm looking for. So I have to find this light up here. I zoomed out, hit G. I'm going to move that down closer into our viewport. G. There we go. Now I'm going to hit the zero key. And we can see already that looks pretty good. But there's only light coming from one direction. I want to light up in here also. So what I need to do is add another light. So I'm going to go to Add, Light, Add a Point Light. That's like a hanging light bulb. And I'm going to grab it. I'm going to move it over here. So let's rotate this around a little bit. Let's zoom in. Let's grab it. And let's move it till it lights up in there. And it just sort of looks the most interesting. So I think right about like that. Now I'm going to hit the zero key and we can see how this scene will look. And we get a pretty good idea, but if we want a full resolution look, we can click on Render, Render Image. Um, and that looks pretty good. Now, this is a little too big. So let me click on my item again. I'm gonna click on Scale, and I'm gonna use this circle here to just make it a little smaller. Then I'm going to click on G and move it in the middle. And that's exactly what I want the scene to look like. But how do we make it more interesting? Well, we put a material on it. So I'm going to click on the item. And when you click on the item, this beach ball becomes available. Now, if you look at any of these items, like let's say this light bulb, and you, when you click on an item, the second icon here becomes that item. So this is a 10 watt bulb. And if we look at the other light bulb that's all the way out here, that's a thousand white watt light bulb. So let's zoom back in again. And let's click on the item. And we're going to click on this beach ball. And you'll see it's empty because there's no material currently applied to this item. So I'm going to click on new. I'm going to leave the material surface as principled BSDF. That's an internal algorithm in Blender, because that will work for us. And let me click and select a color. So I can just go here, and I can move this around and find a pleasing color for this particular item. So that looks pretty good, but it's a little too bright, so I can bring this down a little bit. OK, so now we have this lit the way we'd like, but we need to put some type of background on it. So we're going to click on this icon here that says World Properties. And we're going to click on Color for a Background. And let's take and play around with what color backgrounds seem to make the most sense here. And a little bit of blue is nice. And I'm going to increase the brightness just a little bit. Now you have to be careful here. When you increase the brightness, it is going to also affect the lighting of your scene. So I'm going to make this, let's say, 0.7 for the strength. And now we're going to go ahead and say, render this image. And there we have it. We have a very nice 3D image. So I'm going to take image, save as. I'm going to save it as JPEG so it will be smaller. I'm going to save it to my download directory. And I'm going to call this shelf image, save as image. OK, now let's go back to the models application. And I'm going to go back to my shelf bracket. And I'm going to click on the Creator Tools under Create Tools, Creator Tools. I'm going to say I want to update the model. 
I'm going to delete the old screen image that was there. I'm going to go to my downloads directory and place this image in there. And I have to make sure I click on add above file to model. Then I'm going to save or update the shared model. I'm going to look at it now. And let's look for our bracket. And there we go. We have our custom shelf bracket. Now, I actually don't like that background. I think it's a little bit too dark. So we could go back in and make it lighter. So we just go back here. And let's take and go back to the world and go to background colors. And let's lighten that up a little bit. Let's actually make it a little bit whiter. It'll be white. So now let's change the intensity of that so it's a light white. Let's see how that looks if we render it now. I think that's a little better look for the preview. So all we need to do now is go back to our render window, go back to image, save as. We're going to save it as the same name, JPEG. Save as image. Now we'll go back in here. We'll go to update our model. We'll delete this one here. We'll click on this here. Shelf image JPEG, open, add above file, update shared model. Go back to our search here. Type in bracket. Ah, much better. There you go. Well, folks, we learned a little bit about models. We learned a little bit about using Blender. And you can see it's a trial and error kind of process. But with the steps I gave you, it's relatively simple. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, share the video. You know all the stuff. And let's continue to learn things together.